Hey there, and welcome back. Today we'll be breaking down the top three solo PvE builds you should start with. We will be talking about their strengths and how they will fare down the road in PvE and PvP. My goal is to give you some insight on what type of content you can expect to excel in. Now before we get into the breakdown, I do want to announce not one, but two giveaways. I'll be giving away 30 days premium to two different winners on April 24, 2023. Now in order to join, you make sure to subscribe to the channel and comment with your in-game name and server. The giveaway will be live on stream, so make sure to tune in. Now without further ado, let's get into the breakdown. At number 3, we have the Fire Staff. The Fire Staff is a great starter weapon. It does huge damage against mobs and is great in PvP. The Fire Staff is one of the builds that allows you to go straight into the Black Zone and farm mobs, jump into solo dungeons and corrupted dungeons. As you progress with the Fire Staff, you will do well in group PvP and solo PvP. You won't be able to solo group content like group dungeons or static dungeons like other weapons. However, overall the Fire Staff is a great weapon to start off with. Now let's talk about the build that we will run with the Fire Staff. For your helmet, I would recommend the Cultist Cowl. It's a great PvE replacement for Mage Cowl. Now this helmet is a bit more expensive than others, so if you're short on silver, look into getting a Scholar Cowl. For the Cultist Cowl, you'll take Inner Corruption for your D. This will do damage to a mob target for a high amount over 4 seconds. You can use this on an enemy player, however the damage will be much less and is dependent on them attacking you. Now the passive that you'll take is Aggression for the increased damage by 3.5%. For your armor piece, go with Cleric Robe. You will go with Everlasting Spirit for your R ability. This will cast a ward on you for 1.5 seconds. And if you take damage within that time frame, you will become immune to further damage for 3 seconds. It will also increase your damage output by 20%. This is a great ability to counter high bursts and will set you up for high damage output. You will also go with Aggression for the increased 8% damage as your passive. On your Fire Staff, for your Q you will go with Burning Field, which will do damage on impact and an additional damage every half second for 4 seconds. This does a huge amount of damage to players and a good amount of damage to mobs. I like to use it when I round up mobs and AoE them down. Now for your W, you have different options that you can take based on what you are doing. I like to use Flame Blast as it will do high amount of AoE damage. Another ability that I like to use is Wall of Flame. This is great in PvP scenarios and will drop a 14 meter firewall in front of you that will last about 5 seconds. Not only will it do high amount of damage over 3 seconds to any enemy that it touches, it will also make them flee for half a second. Your E is Pyro Blast. You are able to charge this ability up and the longer that you charge it, the harder it will hit. Not only will this do a high amount of damage, it will also knock back all enemies hit by it. Your passive will be Burn, which will leave a dot that deals a damage over 2.5 seconds. If you feel like you are having energy issues, opt into Energet. As I mentioned, your abilities can become a bit energy heavy. I recommend taking a Limhurst Cape for Energy Reserve, which will restore 80% of your max energy for 9 seconds. For your offhand, start off with a Tome of Spells. It is cheap and provides you with more energy. You can always swap later on into a Moisak for more damage or Eye of Secrets for more energy. Now for your boots, I recommend going with Soldier Boots as they provide you with defense. For your F, I recommend starting with Rejuvenating Sprint. This will allow you to heal up as you fight mobs. As you ramp up, you can switch over to Wanderlust, especially if you are looking to do some PvP. At number 2, we have the Cursed Staff. The Cursed Staff is a very strong starting weapon. You will do great against empowered mobs in Black Zone areas as you grind out some combat fame. You will excel in solo dungeons as well. If you decide to jump into PvP, rest assured that you'll have an edge with your huge damage, crowd control, and immunities from the build I will recommend. One of the best things about starting off with Curse Staff is that you'll be able to transition over to Shadow Caller if you decide to focus on more difficult PvE content. You will also be able to solo group content like Tier 5 Statics and Tier 5 Group Dungeons. You will also do great in large Avalonian dungeons with your friends or guild. Let's talk about a build I recommend. When it comes to your helmet slot, there are two options that you can use. You're able to go with Scholar Cower or Hunter Hood. The Scholar Cow will provide you with a Force Shield which will knock back all of your enemies and ignores crowd control resistance. This is great to use when you need some space to kite or to set up your next damage rotation. It makes it very difficult for a target to get on you and allows you to throw an extra bomb. You will also go with Aggression as your passive for the extra 3.5% damage. Now if, if you decide to go with Hunter Hood, you will take Retaliate. This will increase your damage resistance and reflect 100% of the damage that you take. This is a huge ability to use when getting bursted down. Your passive is Balanced Mind for the increased damage by 1.5% and 1% defense. For your armor, I recommend going with Cleric Robe. 
Everlasting Spirit is great as it will make you immune to damage and increase your damage by 20%. This is big if you time it with your Cursed Thefts E as it will do devastating damage. For your passive, go with Aggression for the 8% increase in damage. On your Cursed Staff, you will take Cursed Sickle for your Q. This will apply a Vile Cursed Charge to each enemy it hits. Since the Sickle does return to you, you can apply multiple charges. You will do damage as the Sickle hits and each Vile Charge will do an additional damage over 8 seconds and stacks up to 4 times. For your W, you will start off with Armor Piercer, which does a good amount of damage and lowers resistances over 4 seconds. However, I recommend running Desecrate. This will root your target and place a Vile Curse. This is great for a group of mobs or if you find yourself in a PvP situation. Your E is Death Curse. It has a small cast and places a bomb-like spell on your enemy that pops after 5 seconds. The more Vile Charges you have on your enemy, the more damage it will do. For your offhand, you can go with Tome of Spells to unlock Muisak in the future or use a shield for the extra health and defense. Any of them will be viable. I recommend starting with a basic cape until you can afford a Carleon cape. The Carleon cape is great since it will reset your Q and allows you to throw two quick Qs, getting you four stacks up quickly. Your boots will be soldier boots. Start off with rejuvenating sprint for the healing. And once you're ready to chase mounts and enemy players down, you will switch over to Wanderlust. At number one, we have the Druidic Staff the king of solo PvE. The great thing about the Druidic Staff build is that it is cheap, you will only need 4.1 and you'll be able to solo empowered mobs and tier 8 plus solo dungeons, as well as solo bosses and statics, group dungeons and the roads. As you max out your mastery in nature, you can switch over to the great nature staff to solo static dungeons and group dungeons. If you want to dip into some PvP, you can go with the Blight Staff and provide amazing group healing. Now let's get into the build. For your helmet, I would recommend the Cultist Cowl. As I mentioned earlier, it's a great PvE replacement for Mage Cow. Since it is a bit pricey, you can start with Scholar Cow. For your Cultist Cow, you will take Inner Corruption for your D. This will damage a mob target for a high amount over 4 seconds. You can use this on an enemy player, however the damage will be much less and is dependent on them attacking you. Go with Aggression as your passive for the increased damage. Your armor piece will be Mercenary Jacket. This provides you with a high sustain through your R Bloodlust, which allows your next 7 auto attacks to heal you. You will also take Balanced Mine as your passive for the increased damage and healing cast by 4%. On your Druidic Staff, you will go with Thorns. This will drop Thorns on the ground causing damage and inflicting Thorn Charges that stack up to 5 times. Every normal attack will pop a Thorn Charge and do increased damage. You can drop Thorns 3 times, so make sure to spread them out on your mobs. This will be a large part of your damage output. For your W, you can go with Brambles. It's great for damage and interrupting casts. However, if you're facing empowered mobs or bosses, you can go with Protection of Nature. This will provide you with defense and increase the healing that you receive by 35%. This is great to pair with your Bloodlust for empowered healing from your normal attacks. Your E is Spiritual Seed. You can cast this on yourself and one other person. However, when running solo, only cast Spiritual Seed once for a short cooldown. You can also pair this up with your Protection of Nature for a larger heal. I recommend taking Energetic as your passive for the energy regain while you kill mobs. For your offhand, you will take Torch for the increased attack speed, which also goes great with Protection of Nature and Bloodlust. Now for your cape, start with a basic tier 4.1 until you can afford Thetford cape. This is great for the increased damage and to round up mobs. Your boots will be Soldier Boots for the increased defense and healing that you will receive from Rejuvenating Sprint. Now that we've gone over these three builds, they all have something in common. They are great solo versus mobs and do very well in late game in both PvE and PvP. You will have many options to branch off to other sister weapons. I'm more than confident if you start with any of these three, you will have a great start and be set for content down the road. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to catch me live, I stream every day on YouTube from 9am to 12pm CDT or 2pm to 5pm GMT. Stop by and say hello and we'll see you soon.